I'm going to be rebuilding the Las Vegas Raiders, but with Daniel Jones. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and or subscribe. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. I would appreciate that. But getting straight into the video, it is heavily rumored that Daniel Jones will be going to the Raiders as soon as he got cut from the Giants. I already knew that this dude was going to the Raiders. They said the Niners have heavy interest. It would be so funny if he went to the Cowboys and then played the Giants on Thanksgiving. That would be awesome. But of course, Jerry Jones never actually makes any free agency moves. So I highly doubt that that's going to happen. And off the rip, I just have to address the people that say, oh, this guy's never been given a chance or this and that. His team's been bad. His line's been bad. He's never had any real receivers, even though he just had Malik neighbors. Yes, before this, he hasn't had any real receivers. Let's just get straight to the point. He sucks. It's as simple as that. I, I hate it whenever people try to drag out this narrative of, oh, he needs a chance here. He needs a chance there. He could be like Sam Darnold and work out for the Vikings. Sam Darnold is not doing bad for the Vikings, but people are acting like Sam Darnold is a top 10 QB with the Vikings, which is a little bit frustrating, especially since you look at his stats. He's definitely not doing bad, especially with the record the Vikings have, but I'm sick and tired of the narrative of giving these QBs who just aren't good chances over and over and over again. He's not a good quarterback. Hopefully in Madden though, he will be a good quarterback. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people already ripping me in the comments for that Sam Darnold comment. I don't care. I don't think he's the long-term QB of the future. And if he is, is what are you going to do about JJ McCarthy? And then speaking back on topic for this team, Daniel Jones, again, going to give him one, possibly two years in the Raiders offense to see what he can cook up. And if he works out in Madden, he works out and I would have been completely wrong about him. And I'm also putting us in more of a passing scheme so he can succeed here with the vertical zone run in the Dallas offense. I'm trying out three, four disguise Pittsburgh defense. Everyone's been glazing this, but it usually never works for me. So this is what we got going on for the offense. Jacoby Myers, one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL. Trey Tucker's not that bad. Brock Bowers is amazing. A lot of people were scratching their heads at this pick, especially after picking Michael Mayer, but it worked out perfectly. He is amazing. Uh, he's an amazing weapon for this offense. O-line, honestly, not that bad. You can definitely say, well, you can easily say that it's much worse in New York. So he's getting an upgrade here with Colton Miller. Jackson Powers Johnson, haven't seen much or heard much of him, but I'm sure he's doing good. He's up to a 77 by Madden standard. You got Andre James, Cody Whitehair, Andreas Pete. Maybe a little more work to do in this offensive line, but it's great. Need a new running back. I can't believe they just wouldn't pay Josh Jacobs considering the fact that they had so much cap room to pay him. And they just let him walk not even tagging trading is crazy. Max Crosby, obviously a beast. You got Jack Jones, Nate Hobbs, Trayvon Merrig, Tyree Wilson already in normal development after one year. Honestly, haven't heard much of him. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, he's young. You got to give him time. You're a top 10 pick. I don't, unless you're a quarterback, I'm not giving you time to develop. You're a top 10 pick. You need to produce immediately or at least show some like really nice flashes. But I've heard next to nothing about the improvement of Tyree Wilson. I'm not hating, but he's also not good in Madden. I've never seen him play well or perform well in Madden. I don't know why Christian Wilkins isn't rushing off the rush defensive tackle and then Tyree Wilson isn't rushing off the edge. So I guess I'm going to have to manually change that. But anyways, let's see how Daniel Jones will do in this Raiders offense. I highly doubt it will work out. Tyree Wilson will be rushing off the edge. And now I got Christian Wilkins at the rush defensive tackle. So I fixed both of those. Let's move into the midseason mark. We are one in six. For the sake of the video, should I just try to let Daniel Jones be like the starter? Should I just allow it? Stats and awards, Daniel Jones, he's awful. He's so bad. Oh my gosh. How do you already have eight touchdowns to 19 interceptions? I was genuinely going to give him a two-year chance. How do you throw 19 interceptions by the mid-season mark? We're only in week eight and you've thrown 19 interceptions. That is baffling that I've never seen someone perform that poorly. I want to see how much how much worse he gets throughout the season. That is crazy. One in six in the division, and we are the worst in our entire conference. Weekly awards, Koontz here with six tackles and four sacks. Never heard of you in my life, but good for you. Scouting national focus, of course it's going to be QB here. Players ready to negotiate, $119 million to spend here. Nate Hobbs absolutely wants you back. Player-friendly deal, only $8 million a year. Here he signs with the team. Then Trayvon Merrig, 25 five years old, four-year contract, eight million a year. He resigns with the team. Then Spilling, I don't mind back, but at the same time, he doesn't want to be here. Kuntz here may get a resigning with how he's bought out. Marcus Epps can walk, and then all these other extras too can walk. I'm not going to say extra to Devon Diablo. I love Devon Diablo, but he doesn't want to be here. He's about to turn 27. He's only 74 overall with 
uh, normal development. Caleb on chase on another first round bust. Desmond Ritter, he's a bust. I mean, he was only a third round pick, but still everyone else here, I'm just not interested in. Danny Dimes, baby. Maybe we sign him for another year. Absolutely not. Yeah, I'm just not interested in, in any of our free agents. So let's move into the playoffs. Three and 14, our offensive passing yards, 29. Just look at everything. Look at the defense, dude. Yeah, Pittsburgh defense, three, four disguise works real well, guys. Thank you. Stats and awards, Danny Dimes. I guess it's a slight improvement. He's technically not the worst quarterback in the NFL. 30th offense, 30th defense. But actually, let me go back and show you something. There are 32 NFL teams in the NFL. Everyone knows this. He is 33rd in passer rating. That is... That is a crazy accomplishment. 28 interceptions to 20 touchdowns, 67 pass rating. I don't think I've ever seen a worse season in my entire life. Alexander Madison, two fumbles, 10 touchdowns, 3.5 per carry. Jacoby Myers, 1,000 yards, five touchdowns. Trey Tucker, three touchdowns, almost 900 yards. Brock Bowers, eight touchdowns, 650 yards. Defensively, Divine Diablo, 128 tackles, 112 for Spillane, then tackles for a loss, 14 for Wilkins, eight for Crosby, eight for Wilson, then sacks, nine for Crosby, seven and a half for Wilkins, six for Koontz here, and he had four of them in one game. Interceptions, three for Holmes, two for Spillane, and Nate Hobbs. Deflections here, nine for Diablo, eight for Spillane, and then safeties on the team is zero. Defensive touchdowns is zero. And the Eagles get their revenge on the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, also beating them by three points, like how the Chiefs beat them by three points, 38 to 35. Jalen Hurts wins the Super Bowl MVP. Patrick Mahomes wins the league MVP, and there are no awards here for the Raiders. In the AFC West, John Jenkins retires. Is there a way that I can see the most interceptions thrown by anyone in the NFL? Interceptions here, that's for picked off. I wanna see the record for the most interceptions thrown in NFL history in a single season by a QB. Why doesn't it show that? That's super lame. So I just looked it up. George Blanda has thrown the most, most intercepted passes in a season with 42 interceptions in 1962. How is that man like legally allowed to do that? How are you how are you throwing 42 interceptions in a season and you're not even you know, might as well just put your running back at quarterback there, bro? 42 interceptions? That's ridiculous. And for the re-signings, Koontz didn't even get an upgrade. All these other extras I just don't really want. So I'm just gonna let them all walk to free agency, including Danny Dimes. Forgot to look at the team upgrades, but Jackson Powers Johnson has star development. Brock Bowers has superstar development. Defensively looking into it, Christian Wilkins gets superstar development, and there's no other upgrades on the team. I'm switching to a 4-3. I don't care. We could bring Khalil Mack back to the Raiders. He has no interest in coming back, though. Garrett Bowles maybe on a one-year deal, but that would really be it. Ryan Kelly, Stephon Gilmore, pretty weak free agency. I will go after Ernest Jones, though. After free agency, we mainly got a lot of filler players, but Ernest Jones is on a six-year contract, had to pay him a little bit extra. His interest was not as high as it is now, but Jalen Warren didn't have much interest, still signed him on a four-year deal. Even if I do get a different running back, I will just, um, just have Jalen Warren as the backup either way. But either way, Jalen Warren is on the Raiders, which honestly makes a lot of sense. Bobby Wagner on a one-year deal, Hilton, and then DJ Jones all on one-year deals as well. So a lot of Band-Aid players, but for now, let's just move into the draft. And we have the number one overall pick in the draft. Surprise, surprise here. And there is no top QB on the board. And the QB class sucks, dude. This is like a Malik Willis, Kenny Pickett QB class. I'm not reaching here. I might honestly just trade back from the number one spot because I'm not picking an offensive tackle with the number one overall pick. Not a defensive tackle. I'm okay on linebackers. Yeah, I'm still not going to pick an offensive tackle. Who is this guy? Bobby Burton. I'm still not going to pick him. Around two to three talents. Poor speed, but elite throw power, elite strength here. C to D awareness. Yeah, I'm going to trade down. We're just going to have to suck it up and it's not going to be Daniel Jones. We're probably going to have a different QB starting for us, but the Bears are willing to give us pick seven and their first round pick next year to jump to number one. I want to see, ooh, three first round picks from the Buccaneers is crazy, but we have to go back to 12. Three first round picks from the Texans, they're at pick 12, but they still have a stronger team than the Buccaneers. So the Buccaneers' future picks may be better, but the uh, Texans' now picks are better. Okay, so I think the Seahawks are the move here. We trade back to 13 and we get two more first round picks after that and a second round pick uh, in this draft. And we get a fifth in the next draft and then a seventh in this draft as well. I think that's amazing value for us, especially since the Seahawks long-term probably won't have a good QB because this QB draft class is terrible and Geno isn't very good in simulation. So I think long-term, this is gonna work out for us. Seahawks are gonna get the number one pick. 
Who will they pick in the draft? And it always does this animation. It will be a left tackle. They traded three first round picks and a second round pick for a left tackle. Elite play, Seahawks. And Bobby Burton goes to the Giants. That's your next Daniel Jones. They already drafted the new one. And at the top of the board, you have Rodney McKinney here. I mean, I'm not going to draft him. Great throw power. He could have hidden development. F spin move. He's not really much of a runner. Honestly, doesn't look bad in his accuracies. If he falls to the second round, I wouldn't mind pulling the trigger on that. But I'm going to take someone else in the first round. Tobias Robbins here out of Michigan State. Is, is he that good? Uh, decent speed, but elite acceleration. Not going to choose that. Honestly, the board here doesn't look that good either. Marquise Whitehead might go defense here as we have good speed, great acceleration. Good, good, good. That honestly looks pretty good. The value board here, I don't need tight end, obviously. Strong safety, left guard, defensive end. I could give up on Tyree Wilson. He's 261. Steven Lawrence here out of Texas. Good speed, solid strength, elite acceleration. This guy looks pretty good as well. Yeah, so I think the best value play here is to either trade back again or just draft Marquise Whitehead, which I think I'm just going to go with Marquise Whitehead. I need a strong safety. I have Merig at free safety. So Marquise Whitehead, let's see what we got here. Bit of a reach for him. Ranked 54 in the class, more than bit of a reach, but normal development out of Alabama. That sucks, but honestly, at least we didn't spend the number one overall pick on him. And in round number two, picking up a new right guard in Jamie Savage here out of Florida. 6'4", 344, hidden development, 86 strength here, A's and B's across the board. Oklahoma State, great strength. Um, A spec catch, F medium route though. Not a very good, I mean, not a very good wide receiver class either. Don Tate out of Illinois, great speed, great acceleration, A injury, just D's and F's across the board. These skills are just so bad. Darius McLeod out of Washington, 6'2", 213. I want to give more commentary on the draft. I usually don't do that. This is typically how I think about my scouting. Elite acceleration, only solid speed though. Good strength, great change of direction, A kick return, A spec catch, B short route, B medium route. Honestly, he looks the best out of all of them. I'm in the middle of the second round. I have another pick. Might as well just pull the trigger on this. I need a new receiver. Ranked 13 the class, got him at 45. Hidden development, that's exactly what we want. 95 acceleration, but only 89 speed. He will be wide receiver too. We're at the beginning of round three, and Mason Cartwright here is a two to three round projection player. There's no one else here that looks really that good. So this guy, I might pull the trigger on him and see what we have in a younger guy. Great throw power, solid speed, elite acceleration, C awareness, accuracies are all Bs across the board. Honestly, not a bad shout. He could be the guy, most likely won't, but it doesn't hurt to pick him. Ranked 68 in the class, got him at 65, B plus pick. Hidden development. Mason Cartwright here, wearing number zero, 92 throw power, 84 speed, 91 acceleration. This was a major steal. And we also had another third round pick. Is that also from the Seahawks? I don't think it is. Picking up Leo Middleton, right guard that I'm going to move to right tackle, ranked 57 in the class, got him at 70. Normal development, really unfortunate. These Alabama players keep giving me normal development. And then I'm picking up this defensive tackle, Anthony. Antoine Newberry out of USF, 6'2", 315, hidden development in the fourth round, 92 strength as a rookie is great. He got a B for play rec, but he mainly had elite strength. Well, great strength. That's why I picked him. And the Colts are willing to give up their next year's fourth round pick for my pick number one in the fifth round. So I'm just going to trade back there and then end the draft. Honestly, extremely solid draft. Unfortunate that Whitehead's a normal development, but Savage here has hidden development. McLeod has hidden development. Cartwright has hidden development. Middleton only came with normal development, but that's fine for now. Newberry's a 68, but he has hidden development. Then I stopped drafting after that. And now, as always, ooh, Spillane's back in free agency. I'll sign him back. I did not know he would just remain um, unpicked up there. He got us over 100 tackles last year, so I'll definitely sign him again. Kareem Hunt's here as well. Alan Lazard as a wide receiver three, I wouldn't mind either, so I'm going to have him. My receiver depth isn't that crazy. And then I need a mentor QB, of course. We got Taylor Heineke. We're going to use him for our new QB. Now, after the draft, this is the team. We got Gardner Minshew here. I don't know how long his contract is, but I honestly don't even want him on my team anymore. Yeah, sure. We'll lose half a million dollars by cutting him. I just don't want him on my team. I don't even know if he has the mentor tag. He might honestly have it, but who cares? We have Taylor Heineke as the mentor now. Cartwright is going to be the starter. Savage, why are you not playing right, right guard when I tell you to play right guard? That's literally your position. And now I got him there. Middleton's moved to the outside. Savage is immediately going to be a starter. McLeod's up to a 77 after the XP boost from the preseason. We got Lazard. Heineke, of course, as the backup. Team on the offense shaping up nicely, especially with Jalen Warren. McLeod hopefully becoming the number one receiver. I'm actually going to make him the number one receiver. And then Jacoby Myers will be in the slot. We're going to have Warren move up. Ernest Jones is going to move up as well. Tyree Wilson off the edge. Defensively, Whitehead's immediately the starter. 
and then everything else looks pretty good here we're going to move up Jack Jones, and then Newberry is still going to remain the three, and I'm going to move Bobby Wagner to left outside linebacker, and then I'm going to have Spillane be the right outside linebacker. So that does look a lot better. 83 overall team after one year and terrible Daniel Jones. Cartwright, I'm not expecting him to be a baller, especially at a 72, but he can't be as worse than Daniel Jones. Like He just can't be worse. I don't see how you can get much worse. He's getting more XP from Taylor Heineke. 90 overall Brock Bowers with him as well. New receiver, new offensive lineman, new Jalen Warren at the running back. He's got a good setup for him going. He's got a good setup. Let's see how Antonio Pierce does with this at the midseason mark. Three and four, same record as the Chiefs. They're much better than us. They're probably going to blow us out, but we are ninth in passing yards. Defense not doing too hot. We're 10th in the conference right now. We're really contested division. Doubt we're going to make the playoffs. I mean, we only have a 72 overall quarterback, but a lot better than the previous season here. What do I want to do for the scouting national focus? Maybe edge rusher, honestly, to replace Tyree Wilson. He doesn't seem that good, so we're going to go with that. And for the players ready to negotiate, Jacoby Myers is 28. I don't want to do a three-year. I'll do a two-year deal, and he wants me to commit to his team. No, I'm not doing that. Jack Jones, I'll do a two-year deal with him if he wants to do it. Solid offer, but he does not want to do it. Colt Miller, I will not be picky with him. He's the franchise left tackle. He stays with the team. And then Robert Spillane's just a one-year deal. Zamir White can walk. All these other extras and one-year players can walk as well. If Taylor Haneke had an interest in staying with the team, I would re-sign him. AJ Cole is 29. Daniel Carson is 30. AJ Cole, I'm going to sign back because punters really don't regress in Madden. And Daniel Carson, though, I don't know if he's going to last long due to regression in Madden. I'll sign him to a two-year deal, though. So he re-signs on that. Everyone else here, I'm just not interested in. I don't even want Tyree Wilson back unless he breaks out this year. So apart from that, we have 98 million left in cap room. Maybe we can maneuver a free agency, but for now, let's see if we can potentially make the playoffs. And we do make the playoffs as we're here to face the Chiefs. So we're gonna be a first round exit, but you know what? So much better than going from the number one overall pick to a playoff team, I'll honestly take it. And our passing yards are ninth in the league and our defense is seventh in the league for points per game. That's amazing. Stats and awards, Mason Cartwright, amazing. Top 10 in passing yards in his rookie year, 12th best offense, eighth best defense in the league, 4,200 yards, 30 touchdowns, 14 receptions, 96 pass rating. We got a steal in a franchise QB in round three of the draft. Player tag, day one starter, QB of the future. You love to see it. 14 interceptions is a bit much, but obviously he's a lower overall. He's getting things worked out. 94 pass rating, 96 pass rating. Definitely not bad. Well, amazing for a rookie in real life, but in Madden, not bad. Jalen Warren, no fumbles, eight touchdowns, only 3.8 per carry though. Jacoby Myers, 11 touchdowns, 1,100 yards. McLeod, the rookie, five yards shy from a thousand yard season, six touchdowns. Brock Bauer, six touchdowns, 900 yards. Alan Lazard, 800 yards and six touchdowns. 10 sacks allowed by Jackson Powers Johnson. That's quite a bit for a guard. Ernest Jones, 105 tackles, 84 for Jack Jones. Tackle tackles for a loss. By the way, this is the Buffalo Bills playbook, defensive playbook. Much better than the Steelers, in my opinion. 15 tackles for a loss for Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins. 12 for Tyree Wilson. 12 for DJ Jones. 10 for Ernest Jones. Sacks 19 for Max Crosby. 10 for Wilkins. 5.5 for Wilson. And then 3.5 for DJ Jones. Tyree Wilson here, not a bad shout for a season, but not top 10 pick worthy for a season. If he gets a development upgrade, I'll re-sign him, but it's uh, it's not crazy here. Now, I'm expecting a little bit more. Nate Hobbs, four interceptions, three for Jack Jones. Deflections, 14 from Nate Hobbs is crazy. 10 from Marquise Whitehead, the rookie. That's great to see. And then safeties on the team, one for DJ Jones. Defensive touchdowns is nothing. Can we beat the Kansas City Chiefs to somehow move on to the divisional round here? Doubt we will, and we do not. 24-21, very close game though. Let's move into the offseason. And the Bills finally win their first Super Bowl as the Eagles go to back-to-back -back Super Bowls, but this time they lose Josh Allen wins the Super Bowl MVP. Jordan Love wins the league MVP. And there are no awards here for the Raiders. Really? My QB doesn't get rookie of the year? That's unfortunate. In the AFC West, nobody retires. For the team upgrades, Cartwright comes with star development, but he's already up to an 82 overall with the boost. You'd love to see it. McLeod comes with star development as well. Same thing with Savage. Really not that bad. Middleton, only normal development, but honestly, he can stay there at right tackle. 76 overall definitely isn't bad. Solid offensive line. Still need a little bit better receivers. I don't know if Myers even even wants to stay here. McLeod is not bad. Of course, Brock Bowers is amazing, but still need to improve the offensive weapons a little bit more. Christian Wilkins gets superstar X-Factor. Newberry comes with star development. Nate Hobbs gets 
uh, superstar development. No upgrade for Whitehead after having 10 deflections in his rookie season is unfortunate. I mean, it's not crazy, but for a rookie, I would hope that he would get star development, but he does not. No upgrade for Tyree Wilson either. And for the re-signings, Jacoby Myers, I'm going to do neutral deal two years that increases bonus to get him to try and stay here. And he re-signs on that. And then Jack Jones, I'll do honestly neutral deal. And then one year, yeah, I'm cool with this. And he comes to reason, he resigns with the team. Terry Wilson, I'm not gonna accept his option. Spilling just doesn't wanna be here despite him probably gonna end up in free agency again. Alan Lazard and all these other extras, I'm just not interested in. I would like Taylor Heineke back for the mentor tag. Let's see if he just accepts it on a base deal. And he does not, which yeah, I'll probably just get him in free agency anyways. So anyways, let's move into it. And Daniel Jones is back in free agency. Jameis Winston in Vegas? Hell yeah, I love Jameis Winston. Tyler Linderbaum is here, Zach Martin. Tyler Linderbaum, I have Andre James, so I don't need him. But at the same time, Tyler Linderbaum is so cool. I'm, I think I'm just going to pass on that. I don't want to, I mean, I have a lot of money to dish out, so I might come back to that actually. After free agency, I got Kirby Joseph. And yes, I know I picked up Whitehead in the first round. I'm already going to start him over Whitehead. Still depth safeties, still have, still have valuable positions in Madden simulation. Odafe away. I'm sorry, Tyree Wilson fans. He's going to replace Odafe away. Derrick Henry, because why not? And then famous Jameis Winston as a mentor QB. So the offense looking a little bit better here with just Derrick Henry as the starter. Jalen Warren as the one-two punch as well. Defensively, we got Kirby Joseph at strong safety. Merrig at free safety. I need some outside linebackers in this draft. Another depth defensive tackle would be nice as well. We got Odafe away on the outside. And I might want to draft a corner as well. I kind of want to draft a receiver here. Uh, the offensive line seems fine to me. I kind of want to draft a receiver, a corner, an outside linebacker in the later draft. There's still some holes we need to fill. Might have to do that through free agency whenever we get to the start of the next season. And we have pick number five on the board because of the Seahawks. I told you that would work. And the Giants have the number one overall pick again. Imagine if they pick a QB again. And we also have pick number 20. Who are the Giants going to pick? Cheeks. The guy's last name is Cheeks. Another offensive tackle at the number one spot. Ridiculous. And two back-to-back -back offensive tackles there. And then you have a QB and Troy Carroll and then Kirk Bowers corner that would have been really nice if we could get that but we have pick number five imagine if I could trade back again this guy looks sick but I'm not even going to look at a QB our QB honestly seems like the future and then an outside linebacker speed rusher a awareness that guy already looks good but I have Odafe away now the corner is the next best thing on the board we got Kerry Bass here out of Connecticut 6'1 191 solid speed great strength good acceleration 444 B zone coverage, B catching. He looks good. Not top five pick good. These other guys here in round ones, this guy, uh, Amani Lucas out of Washington, 5'10", 200 pounds, good speed, solid strength, solid acceleration. A man coverage, B zone coverage. He looks better. He honestly looks better than the other guy. Where is he on the board? Is he further down? Lucas is a little bit further down. I might consider just trading back here to get the DB because honestly, none of those guys seem like a top five pick worthy to me. I was about to skip to my next pick. I'm gonna look at these offers. Seahawks don't have a first round pick next year. So they're trying to give us our 2028 first round pick. And then the Patriots want me to get their next year's first rounder. No, let me trade back in this round. That's ridiculous. I don't want to trade back all the way there. The Dolphins give me trade back to pick 13. No, that's that's a bad offer. So it looks like nobody's willing to trade for me. The Dolphins won't give me their second and third to trade up, but they're willing to give me a bunch of extra spare picks that I don't really want, but I don't really want to reach on someone but I also don't want to lose the corner. So I think I'm just going to pull the trigger on the corner and just make the reach. Nobody's willing to give me a fair offer to get, to get a top five pick, especially with two top five QBs on the board. I don't want Bass. Lucas looks better. I'm going to reach on Lucas. Amani Lucas out of Washington here is going to be the pick. We're going to see what he has. He's ranked 13 in the class, picked him at five, normal development. Super frustrating. Josh Franco's here out of Florida State, 5'11", 200 pounds, elite acceleration, but only decent speed. That doesn't make a lot of sense. A spec catch, B be catching doesn't look amazing but definitely doesn't look that bad white is c to f awareness i'm not even gonna look at that and then b to d awareness for jamarcus wilcox out of south carolina 63 215 decent speed solid acceleration a spec catch f injury no i don't really know here no linebackers really on the board here i don't want to pick up an offensive tackle Travis Fitzpatrick here. Let's see what you got. A catch in traffic, B deep route, 6'3", 230 here. Elite strength, elite jumping, solid speed, but A catch in traffic, A run block, 
honestly doesn't look bad. I think I'm just going to pull the trigger here. He's probably going to have normal development because that's just how I draft in the first round. Ranked 57 in the class. Hidden development. That's what we're talking about. Jacoby Myers can play in the slot. Then McLeod and this guy can be the one and two. You like to see that. Then we got Jonathan Holcomb here. Ranked 52 in the class. Got him at pick 52. Hidden development middle linebacker. I'm going to move him to left outside linebacker. This Alabama guy has hidden development. 91 speed, 89 acceleration, A's and B's across the board. And round number three, getting a defensive tackle in the third round. Ranked nine in the class. Got him at 84. Hidden development, 99 strength for a rookie. 360 pounds at LSU. Baller pick. Solid draft, and it's a 76 overall for Imani Lucas, but normal development again. Travis Fitzpatrick here, 73 hidden development, hidden development for a Holcomb, and then 76 overall for a third round pick is amazing. And then I got Flowers, who has normal development, then I stopped drafting after that. Looks like the AI got the 70 overall halfback, late round, hidden development, elusive back, Aries Glover, great first name. Aries, what a, what a man. But I want to see what the other DB was in the first round. I want to see the corner, because I picked Lucas at five the corner carry bass does he have hidden development he has normal development so i was right to pass on him and then there was a third corner that i did not look up it was lamar haskins here at pick 14 it was a 77 overall a hidden development that was the one that I missed. It's really unfortunate. He was the third corner on the board and he was the best one, but it's fine. In free agency, my gosh, these running backs galore. Look at that. I've never seen so many running backs in a row just chilling in free agency. Tank Bigsby, star development, 25 years old. I'll definitely take that as a backup. I have Henry, Warren, Bigsby. That's one too many, but I'll just take it anyways. Is there any middle linebackers or right outside linebackers that I can look at? Anthony Walker Jr., not really that crazy. 73 overall for Gather. You know what? I'll, I'll just take it. Now, this is the team going to the next season. We got famous Jameis here. My gosh, the depth at running back is insane. I only signed Derrick Henry on a one-year deal. Fitzpatrick is honestly going to move to the one, and then we're going to have Jacoby Myers at the three, and McLeod's going to be at the two because Myers will be in the slot. O-line's looking good. Brock Bowers is amazing. A lot of depth here. Honestly, I might just re-sign Tank Bigsby because he's uh, hidden development. Well, not hidden development. Star development. He's young. He'll, he'll have a nice contract. Stevenson here uh, is a... Okay, he's the defensive tackle. I was about to say, I was like, no way we drafted... The AI drafted someone that good at defensive end. Luc Lucas here. I was about to say Lucius is a 76 overall. We're going to move him to the number two. Then Gather, I want him at right outside linebacker, but the AI refuses to do that. Holcomb is going to be the left outside linebacker. And I don't think it's going to move Davis uh, Gaither there. And this guy's a speed rusher, so he's not a pass coverage guy. I need him to move the other guy, and then I'm probably going to have to adjust my entire roster now. Please move to the other side, and he does. Okay, now that I got that figured out, I know it's a lot of um, a lot of spewing here of what I'm saying, but Stevenson's already starting over Newberry. Newberry was picked in the previous season. The D-line looks so goaded here. Move this up. D linebackers are looking a lot better. Defense in general is looking a lot better. Specialist here, Fitzpatrick, uh, sure, we'll put him at the two. And then we have Jalen Warren and Derrick Henry as the third down backs. Honestly, do I just give... No, I'm honestly just going to give Derrick Henry all the all the reps there. Tank's big, Tank Bigsby as the secondary power back. And then Tyree Wilson, I don't want him playing at defensive tackle. Holcomb is going to be the starting sub linebacker. Potentially could get defensive rookie of the year, which is what I want. And then Lucas here is going to be the slot over Nate Hobbs. Nate Hobbs will be the one. Whitehead, nah, I don't want Whitehead there either. But anyways, team looking a lot better. Cartwright, hopefully he continues to improve. Got him some new receivers. Sure, Fitzpatrick is lower overall. Maybe shouldn't put him there, but Jacoby Myers gave us 1100 yards in the slot last year so it would be wrong to give him the number one now so after this we will be moving in to the midseason mark but Tyree Wilson has trade offers hold up and from what I can see they're all pretty bad a left outside linebacker that I don't want a fifth round pick on a tight end that I don't need Cassie Green a guy that I just don't need Devin Duvernay just another receiver I don't need but if he has offers like this, I'm sure I can get a, like a third round pick for him. And of course, his contract is running out. So it would make sense just to trade him. Brandon Cook's superstar development is the best thing the Cowboys have to offer me. Sure, let's trade him away to a different conference. They have negative 26 million. So I don't even know why they offered me. But the Chargers were interested as well. So let's see what they want. They also want a right end. 
Can I get a third round pick out of you guys for Tyree Wilson? I almost can. Let me trade away something else in value. Tyree Wilson and a sixth round pick to the Chargers for a third round pick. Bust of a pick in Madden in real life. You never know. But for now, let's move into the midseason mark. Four and three at the midseason mark. We were three and four last year and we made the playoffs, but we are ninth in the conference right now. Highly contested division in conference. Jets are six and one. There's no way Rodgers is still there with them. We're blowing out the Steelers in the previous week, 31 nothing, and then we lose the Broncos, 28 to 20, and then that was a division rivalry. So that was really bad that we lost that. Either way, looking at the scouting national focus, what do I even need here? Sure, let's do corner. And looking at our ranks here, we're 20th in passing yards now, but our defense is still doing well. Our defensive rushing game is still 28th. I don't know how that works, but sure. Players ready to negotiate. Max Crosby, absolutely. Take your bag, dude. Four years and over 30 million a year. He resigns. Tank Bigsby, I honestly wouldn't mind back, but I'm not going to pay a third string running back five million a year. Again, I want him back, but I already have Jalen Warren and Derrick Henry. I might not have Derrick Henry after this season. Jack Jones, I'll do a one-year deal again, but that's all I'm going to do for him. And he resigns the team. Andre James, offensive lineman regression doesn't start until around 30, 31. So sure, three-year contracts stay for the rest of the rebuild. Derrick Henry, it depends how you play. Trey Tucker can walk. Michael Mayer can walk. Honestly, as a backup, not paying you six million a year. I wouldn't mind signing him as a backup for like three or four million a year, but not six million. Aiden O'Connell can walk. And then Davis, I wouldn't mind back, but he's going to regress, so probably not. And then famous Jameis Winston wants to come back. I would love to have my glorious king, Jameis Winston, back, even if even if it's for four million. And then of course Brock Bowers, we will accept that option. Still seventy million in cap room. Let's move into the playoffs. And we go 9-8 and eight again, but this time we missed the playoffs. Our offense mid in the yellow ranks, and then our defense looks great. The defensive rushing game really improved in the second half of the season. Unfortunate that we came off a loss to the Bills to push us out of the wild card, as we had an 8 seed that would have pushed us into the wild card. And the Bills had no right even doing that, because they just got a worse draft pick by winning that game, so... That's super frustrating. Stats and awards, slight regression here from Mason Cartwright. Actually, big regression. 15th best offense, 11th best defense. I mean, one less interception, but he threw eight less touchdowns. His pass rating dropped by four points, a little less yards this time. He's still the guy, but... That's a little bit disappointing compared to his rookie year. Derrick Henry, 22 touchdowns, one fumble, 4.4 per carry, 1,100 yards. Didn't even get 300 attempts. I'm going to re-sign him. Jacoby Myers, 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. And, uh, Darius Cloud, four touchdowns, 1,000 yards. Fitzpatrick, 800 yards, five touchdowns. Brock Bowers, five touchdowns, 700 yards. Ernest Jones with 117 tackles, 92 for Jonathan Holcomb, the rookie, and then tackles for a loss, 13 for Crosby. And Jimmy Stevenson, who is... Oh, no, that's the second string defensive tackle. I was like, who is that? But he... Apparently balled out his rookie year with eight sacks. Christian Wilkins with eight tackles for a loss, seven for Odafe away. Sacks 25 for Max Crosby is crazy. I think that broke the record. 15 for Odafe away, much better than Tyree Wilson. Jimmy Stevenson, rookie year, 13 tackles for a loss and eight sacks is amazing. Outperforming the starter, Christian Wilkins. He has more tackles, more tackles for a loss, more sacks. He's just, he's better apparently than our X Factor, Christian Wilkins. Interceptions, four for Ernest Jones and Nate Hobbs. Deflections here. My gosh. No, that's uh, interceptions yards, not deflections. My gosh, I was about to be like, no way, 39. Ernest Jones with nine deflections, seven for Nate Hobbs, and Jonathan Holcomb, the rookie who's doing great. Safeties on the team, one for Jimmy Stevenson. He's a baller. Defensive touchdowns, and one for Trayvon Merrick and Kirby Joseph. And the Chiefs beat the J.J. McCarthy Vikings as the Vikings are now 0-5 in the Super Bowl. Patch Mahomes with another Super Bowl MVP. Joe Burrow wins the league MVP. Max Crosby, Defensive Player of the Year, and no other awards here for the Raiders. And the most sacks in a season goes to Robert Quinn here. He had 18 sacks in a season. What? Oh, that's just for the Bears. My bad. Sacks in a season, 9 29 for Miles My Garrett in the first simulation well in the second year of the simulation we're in year 2026 now so miles garrett had 29 ridiculous dude and for the re-signings i'm accepting the option for brock bowers tank bigsby can unfortunately walk i really want him back but he's not going to stay here i'm not overpaying for michael mayer trey tucker can walk all these other guys can walk as well 83 million to spend in free agency hopefully there's some really good players there i guess derrick henry was on a two-year deal i thought he was on a one-year deal we got jair alexander here so i'm gonna overpay for this but it seems like we're not even gonna come close to getting him so it looks like i'm gonna have to go after char davius ward as well char various ward not char davius my bad and we were in the lead for that so i'm cool with that brian branch i don't need a safety but that would be sick ronnie stanley 
Uh, Jaden Reed wouldn't be a bad shout either. Elton Jenkins, I'm honestly cool on that. Osa Odigazua, I mean, I'm not going to pay you 20 million whenever my guy Jamie is balling out there. Joe Mixon, no. Makai Becton at right tackle. I could move him back to offensive tackle, and I think that's exactly what I'm going to do with Makai Becton. He's 28 years old. He has star development, so I think I could sign him. He has the highest interest in playing with us. Kenny Moore, I don't think so. Dalton Schultz, no. Charles Cross, no. I don't really know what else I really need here for this team. After free agency, I got all the guys I went after. I got Charvarius Ward, Makai Becton, who I'm going to move to right tackle. Then I got superstar X-Factor, Matt Milano, who I'm going to play at right outside linebacker, obviously. So the offensive line slightly improved here. Oh, Derrick Henry retired, and I guess I just didn't check the retirement, so that's why I didn't see it there. We got Jalen Warren back as the starter. I would have rather had Derrick Henry with him having 22 touchdowns. Then Cloud and Fitzpatrick are both here. Mac uh, Myers is still regressing despite him getting 1,100 yards in a season, just how EA regression works. Then 88 overall team, Matt Milano filled in. Stevenson has superstar development. I forgot to look at the upgrades. Then, of course, the team just, it looks good in general on paper, but you never know with Madden. In general, this does look really good. I might, do I even pick a DB? I really don't need it there. I really don't need defensive tackle. I don't need anything but for my quarterback to really produce, which is typically the problem in my simulations. Uh, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind a new middle linebacker. I'm good on receivers, honestly. I don't really need anything else, but we're going to see what we have in the draft anyways. The Giants no longer have to deal with the top two pick anymore as we are at pick number five again. Did I trade back? No, I, I guess I just have the Seahawks pick for that long. They used this many picks just to get a left tackle. Elite play by the Raiders, the only good draft move from the Raiders in history. Honestly, I guess I just have to pick a corner here. Like, there's nothing else for me to do. Austin Clinton out of Connecticut looks sick. 5'10", 200 pounds, great speed, great, 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 good agility, A catching, B press, A zone coverage, sure. I'm just going to pick this. I'm not even going to think about this. A plus pick, ranked number 11th class, got him at five, hidden development. He looks great, and he'll probably be depth on our team with how much depth we have at corner. Now, I really need a middle linebacker, like a coverage middle linebacker, just as a secondary one. I already have Ernest Jones. I just don't really need any anything else and there's no point in trading back I don't need another receiver but sure I could potentially get one if I do play a fifth season for Jacoby Myers so sure Clyde favors here six one playmaker out of Michigan decent speed great acceleration honestly doesn't look bad I'm gonna reach here it doesn't matter rank 21 in class got him at 14 hidden development sure I'll take it and we got another Clinton here sure their brother Zay Clinton out of Iowa six four 250, great strength, good jumping, good acceleration, good agility, A's and B's across the board. We're going to pull the trigger on this one. 33, ranked 33 in the class, got him at 46. Hidden development, he looks great. Got a defensive tackle here in the third round, ranked 60 in the class, got him at pick 78. Normal development, but 94 strength for a rookie's right. Almost 400 pounds out of Ohio State. A play rec, B power moves. I really don't need anything else. Do I really pick another Clinton, Bobby Clinton? I mean, I don't, I don't know about you, but just looking at his... Um, Looking at his racial identity, I wouldn't say that he's related to the other two. Out of LSU, 6'5", 250, great speed. B's across the board, doesn't look insane, and he's at the top of the board for the reason. Probably normal development on that guy. But this guy, Addison Floyd, may be more related to the other Clintons than the other guy. Elite strength, good speed, great acceleration, looks a lot better. I'm going to pull the trigger on this guy. Depth tight end rank 208 in the class. This guy is terrible, but it's fine. And honestly, I'm in the fourth round. I don't really care about the rest of the draft. So pretty good draft. 77 overall for Clinton. Favors, 75. Zay Clinton, 74. Hines, Steve Hines here, normal development. Floyd was a 66, and then after that, I stopped drafting. Now, this is the fourth and potentially the final year with this team. Fitzpatrick is going to be the two. Favors, honestly, let's move him to the three, and then Myers will play in the slot. We'll see how that goes. So, not high overalls for the team, which is a bit of a problem. We don't have any superstar studs, of course, other than Brock Bowers on the offense. Cartwright, we're just hoping he does well. He did really well in his rookie season, but his receivers, I guess, aren't the craziest, but they're definitely not bad here. Defensively, Clinton is a 75. We'll 76 and this guy a top five pick for us is playing fifth string because we are so stacked at corner and my first round pick is going to have to be on the bench now 
because I'm going to move Clint into the three, see how he performs there. So much depth on the team. Stevenson, Jamie Stevenson was a steal in the draft. Can't believe that guy was a third round pick along with our quarterback being a third round pick as well. We've got Nate Hobbs. Favors is not going to be in the slot. It's going to be Myers and Glover. Sure, we're going to move him up. He's the same overall. Matt Milano as well. All these other guys, Matt Milano is going to be the starter there. And then, wow, Stevenson is over Christian Wilkins already. Did Wilkins regress that hard? He did regress that hard. The same overall with the boost. He's actually a higher overall without their boost. So let's see how we do. 88 overall team. I think we're really good. It just depends on whether or not Clinton wants to play ball here. The offensive line is great. Brock Bowers is great. He has some good options on the team. Definitely not bad here. He's an 84 overall. Let's see if we can make the playoffs in the fourth and potentially the final season. And here we are in the playoffs going 12 and five. You love to see it. Top of the division two seat here. The Browns take the number one seat at 14 and three. I guess they finally moved on from Deshaun Watts and the massage man himself. We could have had the number one seed if we beat the Broncos in week 18, but we lost them. If we lose them here, I'm going to be really upset or we might have just lost it because the Browns would have, yeah, the Browns would have had it either way. So I don't think Madden actually takes that into account, but we'll see. So we just had to let Cartwright cook because he seems to be a top 10 QB now, 10th best offense. 11th best defense. He just had a sophomore slump. He had a sophomore slump. Mahomes for the league MVP. Cartwright is the runner up. Unfortunate. Do you guys want me to look into these actual like awards more? Let me know down in the comments below. Antonio Pierce fourth for coach of the year. In the AFC, Mahomes wins league MVP and offensive player of the year. Josh Downs, number two, Cartwright. You could at least give Cartwright the offensive player of the year. That's kind of ridiculous. Max Crosby, back-to-back -back defensive player of the year is here is awesome. Offensive rookie of the year. Clyde Favors at three for the Raiders, but not quite there. And then anyone else on the defense here? Ooh, looks like Austin Clinton, even though it was a third string, is going to get eighth for that. And then Mahomes is the best QB. Cartwright, number two in the league for the AFC. And then is there any? Nope. No Jalen Warren there. Josh Downs. Any receivers from the Raiders? No, none there either. Max Crosby, best defensive lineman in the AFC. And no other notable players, the Raiders. Daniel Carson, fourth best kicker in the league. That's really about it. I guess I should only call out the notable players. But third in the league for pass rating, fourth in the league for passing yards, 11th in passing yards. And then, I mean, fourth in the league for passing touchdowns is what I meant to say. 119 pass rating, eight interceptions, 41 touchdowns, 4,200 yards. I can't believe this guy was a third round pick. It still says player tags, day one starter QB of the future. He is 100% the franchise QB. He should get superstar development. Jalen Warren with four fumbles is unacceptable, but still 10 touchdowns, 4.0 per carry. Mason Cartwright, wow, with one fumble, nine touchdowns as well. He had 50 total touchdowns this year. What a baller, dude. Receiving wise, McLeod, 13 touchdowns, 11 touchdowns for Myers, six for Fitzpatrick, five for Bowers. Great ball distribution here. Sacks, Colton Miller with 11, usually left tackles give up the most. Jackson Powers Johnson lowering the sacks a little bit. Matt Mackay Becton not doing nearly as bad as I thought he would, honestly. So seven is really not bad for an offensive tackle. Andre James with three. So let me know what a lot, a lot of sacks is. I don't even, I don't even know. Matt Milano with 114 tackles, 75 for Max Crosby is surprising. Tackles for a loss, 11 for Stevenson. He is a baller, six and a half sacks. And then Crosby, 10 tackles for a loss, 10 tackles for a loss for Odafe Away, five for Kirby Joseph and Christian Wilkins. Sacks 24 for Max Crosby, eight and a half for Wilkins, six and a half for Stevenson, six and a half for Odafe Away. Kind of a step back there for Odafe Away, but Wilkins and Stevenson is a crazy duo on the inside. Interceptions, three for Matt Milano and three for Kirby Joseph. Pass deflections, eight for Charvarius Ward, seven for Matt Milano. Safeties on the team, zero defensive touchdowns, zero. Crazy good season from us. 10th in the league for defense, second in the league for points scored, 24 point nine is the average. I'm sure the Chiefs have the number one offense in the league, but let's see if we can beat the nine and eight Broncos who we lost to in week 18. I'm going to be so upset. I built such a great team. We're in the wild card and we beat them here to face the 10 and seven Buffalo Bills. We got a Matt Milano revenge game. Let's hop into this and see if we can beat the Bills to move on to the conference championship. Here we are against the Bills and they're going to start out with nothing. We're going to respond with seven. Nice start for the team. Of course, we get home field advantage. Seven, seven game versus the Bills. Just punt back and forth over and over and over again. We're in the fourth quarter now. Offense, please do something. Offense on the Bills didn't do nothing. 27 seconds left. No way they score, right? No way they score. 21 to 14. 
we're going to beat the Bills at home and move on to the conference championship for what, the first time since what, 2000, 2001, 2000? I don't even know when the last time the Raiders made a conference championship. Yeah, so I just looked it up. The last time the Raiders made a conference championship was 2002. I was born in 2003. So this is a very historic moment for me. And of course the Raiders here, here to face the 10 and seven Titans. Who is their quarterback? It's Will Levis. He actually balled out the clip farming paid off. I mean, he's only here because he's boosted overall normal development. This should be an easy win versus the Titans. Here we are versus the Titans. They're going to open up with a punt. So we're going to start with three. Decent start for the team. And it's going to be seriously three nothing at halftime. Boring game. Six nothing now. Finally, their first touchdown is scored. But it's by the Titans. Our offense, please don't choke this. Please do not choke this. Moment by moment here. Third down. They're going to score. 14 to 7, 33 seconds left. They're not going to be able to finish us off there as we will be moving on to the Super Bowl. Here we are in the Super Bowl here to face Danny Dimes' previous team. Who is their current quarterback? Was it the QB that they picked up before? I, I was assuming that guy was a bust. Bobby Burton. I remember him. He was not, in fact, a bust. I guess he was that guy, but I took a quarterback in the same draft class in the third round, passed on Bobby Burton, and Bobby Burton just seems to be that guy. What a storyline for the ages. And for the upgrades, Cartwright does come with superstar development. So him and Bobby Wright are neck and neck, even though Bobby Wright's like, what, a 93 overall with the boost? But I'm also a 93 overall with the boost. So they're neck and neck. But I got my guy in the third round. I picked up Whitehead and traded back for multiple first round picks. So long term, I guess I did better. I want to see what Favors overall is if he's already up to an 80 overall. He hasn't played all the snaps yet. And yes, you can cheat just by looking. And he has star development. It, I'm not going to change it, of course. But I just wanted to see what it was because this is the final game that we're going to be playing so it doesn't do any harm by me just looking at it. And then defensively, we're an 89 overall team with all the boosts on the team. Clinton here, Zay Clinton, has superstar developments. You love to see that. It's crazy to me how Stevenson hasn't already got X-Factor. He's a baller. No other upgrades on the team. Clinton only came with star developments. Great team. Let's see if we can beat Bobby Burton and Daniel Jones. Two previous teams are in the Super Bowl without him. Let's see if we can beat them to cap off this rebuild. Here we are versus the Giants. Raiders versus Giants. Here we got a classic Super Bowl. 12 and 15 versus 9 and 8. Bobby Burton barely got here, but we are up 14 to 3 against the Giants. Make that 17 to 3 against the Giants. They're still they still have yet to score touchdowns. Stuttered there, but that will be a wipeout. Total defensive shutout here. 20 to three versus the Giants. Bobby Burton, non-existent here, and we will take the crown as the Raiders win their first ever Super Bowl since 2002 or 2000. I don't even know at this point, but anyways, guys, apart from that, I thank you guys all for watching. Let me actually check these stats before I give the outro. We got Cartwright, 124 pass rating, two touchdowns, no interceptions, 230 yards. He's probably going to win the Super Bowl MVP for that. Jalen Warren, 4.0 average, only 45 yards. And then Cedric Tillman is on the Giants. Cloud here with 96 yards and a touchdown. Fitzpatrick with a touchdown as well. Brock Bowers, four receptions, 50 yards. Only six-minute quarters, keep in mind. Sacks, two and a half for Odafe away. He could get that Super Bowl MVP. Christian Wilkins with two. Great job by your defense just in general. And then the stats for the other QB, no interceptions from him. The defense just straight up stifled Bobby Burton. And Mason Cartwright is the Super Bowl MVP. I love that we picked that guy up in the third round. Such a great storyline there. Mahomes wins the league MVP. Mason Cartwright snubbed. He had 50 total touchdowns eight interceptions. Who knows? Patrick Mahomes could have done better, but I don't really care. Snubbed regardless. Max Crosby wins the defensive player of the year. Offensive player of the year is Puka Nakua. And I mean, no other awards, no rookie of the years for the Raiders, but that will be a successful rebuild. I thank you guys all for watching. This one was actually really fun. I enjoyed this a lot more, especially since the QB storyline was a lot better. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and or subscribe. Thank you guys all for watching once again, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.